Michael podcast. Bring it, friends. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I've heard so many things about you that I know you've lived in China, I believe, for a while. Well, I didn't live there. I worked there quite you a bit. There yeah, so I was over there a considerable amount of time. Yeah, yeah. and you, you've traveled other places. In yeah, over in Europe and things of that sort. Just all, uh, I was in the exercise equipment business and uh, well, manufactured. What, what type of exercise? Uh, home exercise equipment, like home gyms, exercise uh, bikes, uh, treadmills and everything. In the 2000s? Or? Uh, this was in, yeah, in the 2000s, actually. Right along that and in 2000, all the way up to 2010. Uh, and then into 2015 a little bit. But, um, you know, we did that. We sold uh, product lines and developed product lines for retailers. Like at that time, Kmart, Walmart, uh, some of the big guys and, and all of that. And uh, from that, which was a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. from that, we got into something that was just really wild. And that was infomercials. 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 Like, like, like the, the late night products that are so aren't you in college yeah, yeah that type of thing but these were infomercials that were based off of that were directed toward exercise equipment you know some of these pieces of exercise equipment that you know you see and you go ah that'll never work but it's priced at a point that at a price that everybody's going yeah it's kind of worth trying you know if it's if it's two hundred dollars or yeah or whatever and so you know we had all of these these uh, small pieces of exercise equipment that would sell. And oh my God, at that time, back in 2000 to 2005, it was blowing and going. I mean, we were selling yeah. little mini steppers, these steppers that uh, yeah, are kind of like a stair stepper machine you see at the gym, only they were small. And uh, part of that too was after, because um, I, I a couple months ago, I was reading about exercise equipment because I'm starting to put stuff here. Yeah. Like kettlebells and stuff. Yeah. One yeah. of the things that I was reading was when September 11 happened, after September 11, and God yeah. Bless, yeah. a lot of people started to get into fitness because they were like, I want to go. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So before we go on with that, right. Rick Bird. Right. Thank yes. You, yes. Thank sir. you for coming back. Are you, are you, you look shocked when you walked in. Oh, it's a great, <laughs> uh, great setup you have here. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, the, the last, last time. Yeah. The last time we were here, it was kind of minimal. But uh, now it's it's a it's a great setup. Yeah, it really, we really well. Next time you come back, that'll be three feet that way. The table will be pointing east because that way we can have more people. And then the TV will be over here because that way the the light hits that way. Oh, and then it'll look a lot better. And then we have some cameras and we have six more lights coming in. So when you come, it'll be full production probably Sweet. oh that'll so, be good yeah and and what good. i love about you is most people don't know is the the davidoff painting that i yeah have. yeah I, I wanted to first of all I, I want you to explain to people what this is because i don't want people oh. to listen and watch this oh sure time. and and also this. thank you for these, these oh you're so welcome beautiful. you're welcome these are postcards right the, the, no the, those are greeting cards. greeting cards i got into the greeting card business after i have you know just so many paintings that I've done over the years. Oh, for, it's a Fuente. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what I did is I created these these greeting cards and I sell them into retailers. I sell a whole system or I guess whole displays full of stock oh, greeting this cards. Oh, this Arnold, Mr. That's Mr. Arnold. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. And what I did with those are um, both of those, uh, the like Arnold is smoking his favorite cigar. So there's a significance. Fuente? No, it's not a Fuente. It's a punch. I think is, 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 I, I believe that's what Arnold's favorite cigar is, but the other one was the Hemingway and um, the Hemingway was, was kind of neat. And I did that and I've had uh, a fair amount of interest from Arturo Fuentes, the cigar company, because I've done a series of paintings for them and uh, we're trying to work out some, some deals right now. To, he was to here recently. It yeah. It was, I got it, to, I got to meet him. I, I'm going to be real honest with you. I've, I, being around famous people, right, mm -hmm. in the podcast and, like, being friends with some of them, too, I never feel as excited as when a cigar person comes. Isn't that something? It's, That's it's funny. So, because, like, when he came, you know, he comes with security. Oh, you know, he does, which, yeah. Which you can tell that guy's a bodyguard because he positions himself at an, at an off angle. Right. His hands are, like, uh, when you if you have a gun, if you're carrying a gun, I think it's called sewer position, right? Or, I mean, it's just... So you come here, this is Sewell position. And you saw the guy walk out and he was like this, like in an interview yeah. stance, right? Yeah. But you can tell like this and this is very quick. Yeah. And he walks in like all 
my God. He's beautiful. Oh, I mean, he God. had a beautiful uh, yeah, suit I on. I don't say beautiful. There's just well, something, there was something that radiates from him. Yeah, that, that could be it. But uh, yeah, so I did a painting for him mm -hmm. at that particular uh, time. And when he came here, yeah, and he ago. signed it and everything like that. And so when I got talking to him, which is a wonderful person, really down to earth, and he, he took the time to talk to me, very which I thought was, spoken. yeah, yeah, very soft spoken. Yeah. And I thought that was very, very nice and very interesting. So at the end of our conversation, I said, you know, Carlitos, I said, I am really impressed with what you do. I said, I love your cigars. I smoke them all the time. I'm a great customer and everything. I said, what I'd like to do is I'd like to gift you this painting. And oh, it, he almost came to tears because the painting included his father and his father was very close uh, to him. So, yeah. I mean, so that uh, that worked out very well. And since then, there's been some communication and uh, and we'll see what happens. But for, uh, for the people listening, if you don't know what we're talking about, Arturo Fuente is a, it's a brand of cigars that are. It, they are the, delicious. They yeah. are very. And when I say delicious, if, if you're not a cigar person. It's really difficult to explain to like a non-cigar person, hey, this goes well with like pairings, right? Mm -hmm. Like I had a a, a yacht chef, uh, Paul, and he was explaining palate. And he explained yeah. when he does cigar events, he goes, it's a palate. People don't understand cigars. It's very different from cigarettes. Cigars, oh, it's like yeah. A palate cleanser. That's so right. It's, it's what we're talking about. And Arturo Fuente, he was here recently in Springfield, Missouri, had just for him. And that's where most of your paintings are also, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like most of my him. paintings are, are there just for him. Uh, but he, you know, from what I found out about uh, the Fuente Cigar Company, they're probably the number one cigar producer in the world, uh, pretty close to it. And they, at the time that he was here, I don't know if you heard about this, but mm. he had a factory burned down in the Dominican. I, I had heard about that, but I didn't know. I didn't hear it burned down. I heard there was an incident and no, there's going to be a lot of repairs that needed to yeah, be Yeah, it, it actually burned to the ground. And so mm. I thought at that point in time, because uh, I'd planned to, you know, to meet with him and everything, I thought, mm. oh, I don't know if he's going to be continuing on with his United States tour. Uh, oh, bro, he's... but he, he said, you know what? He said, I've got everything under control down there. And he said, we lost, I think 3 million pounds of premium tobacco. And I said, oh my God, how, how does that really affect your production? It's got to affect it. And he goes, no, not much. And <laughs> he, he said, donate, he donates that to the troops probably. Probably. Yeah. And he yeah. can claim it as a, as a, yeah. Yeah. But still like for you and uh, me, three, I mean, I, I heard that. Thousand, yeah. Yeah, yeah, three million like, pounds oh. is like, oh my God. Any cigar person that watches this and hears that, they're immediately going to either cry, they're going to crunch up, yeah. they're going to be like, what? Yeah. But they're so, my favorite one is their, I like their Maduros. They're good. Do you Maduros, like their double chateaus? It's a little too spicy. Too spicy? It's a little too spicy. I like like the regular uh, Maduro. It's it's like mm -hmm. just for him has it. And normally I hate to say this because it's it's gonna throw him off, but I smoke a lot of Davidoffs. Yeah. But if you look over there, there's two little things of Davidoffs. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I so see. but like when whenever there's like events and stuff like that, uh I'll I'll it's either a quesada, an Arturo Fuente, a nub. The nubs are are they good? I haven't had those. So do you like salty stuff? Like, what's your I palate do. like? I do. So yeah, I like, like salty. salty. Do you yeah. drink much? Uh, I drink bourbons. Bourbons. Okay. Uh -huh. So we're very similar. I have a very salty, salty uh, palate. All right. And bourbon, I like, but like with a good steak, and it has to have a lot of garlic, right? I wouldn't take a nub with that. However, what I would say is you should take a nub cafe, right? Take that one and have a good cup of coffee with it in the morning take the small nub mm -hmm. take the small one i forget the the name of the size um and i'm telling you there's it's to me like i could smoke that and go go run and i would feel like energized because there's wow, a little that's... bit of caffeine in it okay yes for wow. real and uh, there they have a maduro that's it's real good for like lunch so like say you have like a lunch meeting and you want to smoke something I think that Nub Maduro, which I want to show it to you here, because I know for a fact just for him um, has it. Uh, cigars. Where is it? There it is right there. Nub Maduro uh -huh. product. I think I've seen it. They have it at just for him. Yeah. Um, Holtz Cigar Company. Shout out to Holtz for putting this online. Uh, Yeah. So see, look, this is my thing, right? It's a Nicaraguan right. wrap. 
<clears throat> right? Yeah. Uh, you want the Gordo, not the Torpedo. The Torpedo, um, man, that's that's a, it's pretty strong to me, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but the the Gordo, for some reason, the way it's it just smokes real well for lunch. And it says that it's a full body uh, cigar, but obviously for me, for me personally, I'm going to compare it to like uh, Escurio, right? Mm -hmm. Escurio is way much more flavorful, okay. right? But it's a different palate. So to me, this is more of like a, like a lunch, you know, like gotcha. a lunch that you had with buddies, but God, they're, they're, they're so good. Like you've never had a nub. Um, I probably have over the years, but I, I don't really remember. Uh, yeah. And their price point is amazing. It's uh, four to $10. <laughs> So the Connecticut, the Cameroon is amazing. That's a good uh, anytime cigar smoke. Yeah, and that's about a, what, a half hour cigar smoke? Let me show this right hour here smoke. for everybody because I, I, I'm I talking about it and I want to share. Shout out to Holt Cigar Company for putting this online. And and all these you can find at Just For Him too. So the Connecticut is really amazing. That's a that's more like a late afternoon type of cigar. The Cameroon, that's an anytime for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cane, I've had that in Texas. It was pretty good. But it's got to be cold outside. Like, I feel like I've smoked it when it's hot outside and when it's cold outside. Because I really, keep, yeah. So I keep a lot of um, a lot of notes over the years about cigars, because once I understood because you got to understand, I've been going to just for him since I was since I got back from Iraq in September of 09, October of 09, I started going to just for him. Oh, wow. I, yeah, because I didn't want to pay because like in Iraq, they gave us like if you spend one hundred dollars, they give you like one hundred dollars of cigars. Wow. Yeah, dude. So like, and I smoked Holy two God. to three a night. Yeah. Because we were running missions or training. So you smoke three a night. That's three hours. You calm down, you go to bed, you know, three times 30. That's what, uh, 60, probably 60 90, cigars, yeah. you know, yeah. and then you share with everybody because not everybody smokes every night, but everybody, everybody will smoke a cigar deployed. So I was a cigar guy. I always had like oh, cigars. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So, but then when I came back, I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to order. And I started going to just for him. Yeah. And so that was, you know, what, 2000. Yeah. Now, was that when uh, Christian owned the store or was it through so. the Kravitz? Kravitz I, owned it before I, that. I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I can't I, remember when he. I think the, the funniest thing was when I was going to that shop, I was like really quiet. Yeah. And it was because I was going through personal stuff at that time. Like I had just gotten out, you know, I, yeah. I, I was going there when I was in and then I got out and it was like it, it was more of an ego thing, you know. But, dude, like, I remember one time, I won't say his name, but a guy broke a tap because they used to have a tap. And it was free. Oh, I didn't know Yeah, that. it was. Oh, dude, it would, they would just put a tap on. I, I, I was going on Fridays. Right. Fridays, I'd train jujitsu. And then that Friday night, I lived at Chardonnay. I'd walk. Yeah. I'd put I'd put 10 and I'd buy two cigars. So that was 30 bucks. And I had a great time. And I got shit faced. And one time someone broke the tap. And when I went, I stepped on it. I stepped on the on the liquid and I went to tell Jess and then they took the tap away. And I was like, oh, brother, no, brother, if I would have known that I would have been have said like, anything. bro, I would have been drinking it. I would have yeah. drank it and mopped it. That way we would have I wouldn't have cared. Right. But yeah, that was that was how long ago that was. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've seen people get divorced. I've seen I've seen people get into fights in there. Like really, like, yes. I haven't seen a lot of that action. I either. yeah, man. It's but but it's that's because it's so well controlled. Well, because people that's true. people people work themselves. I compare the I compare just for him to my jujitsu gym. Like if you're a shitty person, you just won't grow because people don't want shitty people. And it's not that we ignore you. Like, we'll still try to help you. Right. But I've come to notice, man, over the years that people don't respond well to kindness. They just don't, Rick. They really don't. Oh, that's interesting. They don't. They don't. This is why I am the way that I am. Actually, I've never said this on the podcast before. Yeah. That's why I am the way I am, because people don't respond well to kindness. They think that you're trying to manipulate them or they think that you're trying to tell them what to do. When in reality, it's like, yeah, we are because you behaved incorrectly. I had one time one person, uh, they fell down because they were they were drunk. And it's like, you know, I've I've seen people there. I've been there maybe once or twice myself, you know. So I just picked him up, picked up his plate, and he goes, I didn't fucking ask you to pick up my plate. Holy cow. And I looked at him, and I, I just left. Because at that point, I, I had anger, and I was like, I understand that I need to just walk away from the situation. Right. And, dude, I know that, like, four people in there chewed that person the fuck out. Really? Like, just chewed them. Because the, I, I, what I was doing back then was I would tell jokes because I had just started doing comedy. 
So, you know, there's 50 people in there. I just start telling jokes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, oh, that's what, dude, yeah, just for him has been. I, I, I know people and I'll say this out loud. I'll say it anyway to Christian. I know people that have avoided jail time because of that signature. Wow. Yeah. That's quite a statement. Straight there. up. Yeah. No, straight up. Straight up, man. I know people who've avoided like probably doing something stupid because of that cigar shop. Yeah. Like that's how important that cigar shop is, man. Wow. Yeah. That's why when I go in there, well, I it's... love that you have art. Yeah. I yeah. love it because it's, it gives it more life. Right. Well, you know? you know, quite a few years ago, I started working with Amanda over mm. there and my, my best friend's wife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They recently got married this last year, do, I believe. Do you know the story how they got together? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, I'm going to tell it. So, okay. <laughs> Sean uh, always thought Amanda was beautiful. And I was really high one day and I said, Amanda, what's it got to take for my boy Sean to take you on a date? And she said, he's got to ask me. And I went back in, lit a cigar, and I said, get the fuck in there. And I sat down. And, bro, he didn't talk to me for like two days. Oh, no. Really embarrassed. Yeah, but they went on a date. And now they're married. Now they're married. Now they're married. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's Oh, that's good. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good story. No, I, I started working with her a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was, you know, her her theme was to bring in local artists into into the store and, and display their works. And she has a lot of other local products that she sells. Um, and it just is, is a good environment for, for the entrepreneur and the, and the person that's, you know, selling certain things to, to get a name for themselves. And so we started, um, boy, we, we just started with a few paintings and then it started building and she goes, well, I'd like to have more and more. And then, then there were even some situations that came up where, um, a couple of the customers said, Hey, if you could paint, let's say a picture of Clint Eastwood, I'll buy it. Or oh, if you could paint a picture. Like, okay. Yeah. So I was going to ask you. That. Yeah. Like, most doing. Yeah. Like most of them. And so then that kind of expanded because then Amanda said, well, you know, we've got, we've got this customer that wants Clint Eastwood. Why don't you do another one? <laughs> and, and I think he might buy that. Well, he did. He bought the other one. And then it got to the point where I did two more and, and of various other people. And, and we started noticing we're running out of space here because we, yeah. there were so many paintings. And so we've kind of slowed down a little bit, but uh, they're selling somewhat. I mean, they, it's, uh, it's always a difficult um, pricing scenario for an artist to price their, oh, their paintings. Also well, it's, it's difficult because you don't want to give the painting away. There's, you know, there's a, a value to it that, yeah. that you try to determine based off of, at least I have over the years of seeing what other people have done and, and considering what I think my level is of talent. Mm -hmm. And then I try to sell like that, but a lot of it too, depends on the market that you're in. You know, Springfield is not a, um, you know, overall, uh, you know, a, a big market for art. Not uh, yet. Not, yeah, possibly. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to St. Louis or or Kansas City or something like that, it'd be expanded. You know, a little bit more. But um, <clears throat> but anyway, so that's how I got started. So here's here's my thing, and I wanted to, to yeah. say this right. I I have you know I have a painting from you, and I see your art a lot. And a lot of times when I go to the shop, I go to relax, so I'll look at your painting. Yeah. One of the things that I say why I think it's it's really really good is because the the position of the people mm -hmm. right uh i i'm trying to get someone who's a, a manga artist japanese not japanese cartoons and one yeah. of the things that he says is i was like i asked him i said hey how do you how do you value your art and he goes on how good you can recreate life oh so good description look at your people yeah right? look at his shoulder his shoulders uh -huh. forward right but his shoulder has to be forward because the guitar is right here. Correct. So the way you're drawing him is literally how his positioning would be. And this and shoulder's lower because he's sitting back like this comfortably. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. And then the neck thing, that's just like, I have a bad neck. So it's like, he's just chilling. Just relaxing and, and dude, chilling. Yeah, you can yeah. tell that it's like, and the smile too, the structure on the face is what I love about yeah. it. And well, I'm thank not an you. art guy. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I, uh, you know, I'm a big Jimmy Buffett fan. It was sad to see him pass and hear of his passing and everything. But I thought, you know what? I, I'm going to create a painting that will honor him. And uh, and so there's been some interest with the painting uh, online. Of so people. explain and, to me what we got here. We well, you, you've got, yeah, you've got that. You've got the Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville mm -hmm. logo in the back. You've got a so uh, microphone. Here? 
that that right there is his uh that's a necklace that he used to wear quite a bit with an anchor on it and then that's his his product line of his shirt uh and i can't think of the name of the the product line but it's a picture of a a cartoonish uh parrot on okay. that he yeah. probably wore that yeah he wore that a lot yeah, yeah. yeah. probably and, probably related to to margaritaville correct yeah right. that's what i'm thinking and then uh fins to the left fins to the right uh, one of his famous songs and then the uh the parrot off to the side drinking a margarita so i, I thought it was a nice you. addition why did you just yeah. i understand the song and that yeah here's one thing i don't get okay what's two things actually why did you divide it from margaritaville to that is it because of the, the correlation with the song and the place? And why is there a helicopter in his box? <laughs> oh, there's two things. It, it was just strictly composition. Composition. I, I looked at different uh, ways to lay it out. And that is, I guess I should have depicted the uh, the, the airplane a little better. I think I think to me, the, it's, like, it's, it's his like, airplane. It's his, oh, you know, he had okay. that that airplane, a seaplane. I would have that he I had not have figured. Yeah, out. yeah. I probably should have made that a little bigger. But I've heard his music. I just never was like a big. Obviously, you know, I listen to that music and stuff. Like right. That. I grew up my grandmother. But like, I did not know he had. I, I mean, I knew he was rich. I just didn't know he had a plane. Yeah. That's yeah. So cool that you yeah, got that a seaplane. No, I like that. It's and little. it's a little twist. Oh, I try. Yeah. I try to put a lot of those in my yeah. paintings. So it's just very, people. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So unless, you know, like if you're a if you're a fan, like you wouldn't know it. That's yeah. cool. I, you yeah, did that with you. the Davidoff one too. I believe I did. Yeah. Yeah. You did. You did like a, you did the torpedo size of the, uh -huh. uh, the I'm sorry. Yeah. It was a torpedo. Or, I think it was a torpedo size of it. And I was like, oh, that was my, that's my favorite, you know, cigar. Oh, cool. the, school, the late yeah. hour. I'm sorry. The late hour. Yeah. The late right. hour is my favorite cigar. Like, I could, if, if, if I could snap my fingers and smoke one cigar until I died, it would be that cigar. Right. It's just so amazing. So uh, did you get told how I got that, by the way? Well, I think you signed up for the raffle, right? Yeah. So I only bought 10 tickets. 10 tickets. And okay. I looked at Jess and I said, I'm going to get that painting. And then two days later, everybody at the dinner was like, that motherfucker. He got it. <laughs> oh, dude, I was I was screaming when I got to the shop because I'm oh, cause that is... you know, it's got a. Yeah. Winston, Mr. Churchill, Churchill, right, smoking the his uh his favorite uh his favorite Toro, right? Yeah, and it was like it was like all oh, the level of details, and you got yeah just for him in the back, and yeah, and the the name of the the, of restaurant, the restaurant, right? God, it's it's, it's so pretty. Or no, it's Char, right? Yeah, it's in my yeah in my in my hallway. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, cool. I'm glad. I'm really glad you like it. Dude, that no, was I, that was I a fun it. painting. To, I love to art. Paint. Yeah, and, and once again, I uh you know I just love. You know, a lot of artists love to paint what they love to do, right? Mm -hmm. And I uh, love to smoke cigars and drink bourbon. And so I'll just start sitting down. I, I get going on it. And it's really a lot of fun. It's I enjoyable. got someone that I think uh, I'd like to introduce you. He um, he's, uh, he's, he, he does like comedy shows here and there, you know. He's an artist, uh, but he's pretty young. And he's a he's a good friend. Like he, me and him message quite often. Most of most people, and he's actually done some art for me that he's gifted to me, uh -huh. and wouldn't let me pay it. Which it's Travis Pratt. Most people know Travis who I'm talking Pratt. about. So, okay. ooh, that's some of his work right wow. there. Wow, yeah, it's impressive. And he's local. He's in Joplin, and Joplin. he I don't know, like he just can't get. Yeah, that's that's by the way, that's drawn. Oh my god, that's not a picture. That's drawn. It's really well done. That's also drawn. Oh, great style. Yeah. I love his style. Yeah. I I think he just needs to, that he did that too. Oh, nice mural. Yeah. He's uh I I don't know, man. Like I, I like for you and him to to yeah. connect. Oh, I'd I like think, that. I'd like I think that. you you have a lot of wisdom to share. And he, he well, did like a Game Boy one for me. Oh it's like a Game Boy, but it's like he said that the point of it is you're playing yourself in a game. Right. You just don't realize it. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, what do you do when you play? And I told him and he goes, you're playing yourself. So understand life's just a game. And I was like, oh, oh. so I have that. Uh, I have that safe. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Do you do that that's with great. your paintings? You try to have normally like a like a deeper meaning with it. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of times if I'm, you know, I try to get as many commissions as I possibly can. That's what brings in the revenue to, you know, the old starving artist syndrome. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, when I'm doing something like this, 
you know, this this was just done. I just with no commission intended on it. You uh, just had some time. I just had like... some time. I wanted to do it. So, but my other commissions that I've done, you know, I've done a lot of work for the Springfield Cardinals. I've done some work for the St. Louis Cardinals, and all those are commissions that Chiefs done some stuff on the Chiefs. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. I've done quite a bit. You can check out my website at uh arbirdstudioworks.com arbird can you give me that again yeah at, at www.arbirdstudioworks.com b-y-r-d at let's see no rb studios a-r no no r r-b-y-r-d studioworks.com all right Wow, and that's, the that's of that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show this right here. Yeah, and there's there's the one that I did that I, I think Carlitos Fuentes is very interested in this one because he's good friends with Kid Rock. And if you look at this painting, this is a this is a large painting. It's uh, 30 by 40. Holy shit. And uh, he's smoking a Hemingway. And uh, that uh, the, the colors on that are... The, the video the screen doesn't really do it justice but the colors are very vibrant very vibrant oh, that, that's or, actually over just for him right yeah, now yeah that's that's interesting is that like 90s chris rock there probably yeah yeah i was gonna say not not new guy not chris rock jesus christ yeah um no no not it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the set face oh my god i'm having a break kid rock that. kid rock yeah not my chris god. rock kid rock that's that's yeah. gonna i'm gonna get an email for that yeah <laughs> yeah so so you'll so what see do you got over here if people so, visit your website what yeah, do you recommend okay you well if you go to the original paintings let's say the right second here. right there what that does is it flows through oh, and it gives nice. you gives you prices on that and those prices are negotiable of mm -hmm. any anybody that's interested in this this is the the issue you have a lot of times is is when you have these are all being a lot of these are being exhibited down at a gallery in Galveston. And so the, a lot of these are gallery pricing and gallery pricing is a little different because so, you have to give half of what you got to the gallery. So do you, you make money it. on those galleries? Like if they rent those paintings? No, it's just on a consignment normally do, exhibiting the paintings it's, is, okay. is what it is. Okay. And so, so anyway, they, these are, uh, as you say, this 24 by 36. And, and once again, these, uh, these paintings have, uh, the reason I did this whole line of paintings, for example, with the, the Cuban ladies mm -hmm. is um, I wanted to create a series of paintings that depicted um, typical Cuban life down on the streets, cool. smoking a cigar in Cuba, in Havana. And so these yeah. are all street ladies, okay, that's, you know, they're really gnarly looking and and they smoke their their favorite cigars. like Look at those nails. Yeah. And that, that's really, it's really wild. And that's an Upman. Uh, but I found that, uh, in researching Fabrica it a lot. Tabaco. Oh, that's funny. You got that actually right. Yeah. Fabrica de Tabaco. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's a, that's a pet peeve of mine right there. Oh, I was really? like, oh my God, that's actually written properly. Oh yeah. I've seen art where they say something in Spanish and it's not the case. It's, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's cool that you got. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, Damn. All so right. that's a whole series of paintings that I did based off of the Cuban street ladies. And, uh, and that turned out, they turned out really well and sold a couple of those. Um, and that, that was one of my fun ones to do. This one right here. The well, Cohiba Queen was really neat. That was, that was a lot of fun. But the one beneath it, uh, that I call it Punch and Judy, uh, smoking a punch cigar. That was, that was pretty cool. Nice. And then that's, there's your Hemingway painting that okay. you have the, uh, the, uh, the card on. And then you go down and I did a Carnival series also. Carnival because, for, for Brazil? It was, in, 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 well, yeah, it was a Brazilian Carnival. But I did that for the gallery down in Galveston because they had a lot of following for Mardi Gras. Have you ever and, heard of something called, uh, but before, before we change on that, guys, you can go in here and look at the work. It's beautiful. And you can contact Rick, obviously, through your, yep, contact, right? Yep. Contact form right there. Now. all right yep this is that's that's pretty cool i like that have you yeah. ever heard and i don't know if this will give you any inspiration but in puerto rico we have something called uh dia de las mascaras uh day of the basically it translates to uh day of the masks right uh -huh. but 
Yes. Yeah. Puerto Rico. It's basically to to promote different cultural manifestations that that uh we have in the island, right? That's basically part of what it is. Uh, let me show you an image of what it looks like. There oh, you go. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I think if you ever went down to Puerto Rico, you should go uh -huh. down this because yeah. look, this is all that you're gonna see right here. Wow, that's fabulous. Yeah. It's it's a wild. People spend months preparing their their costumes. Wow. That is so uh, cool. Like months. So yeah, I just I I think that would be really beautiful if you saw some. Yeah, like you know, um, it, I don't know if you've been locally to the restaurant. Um, it's a new restaurant called Habaneros. So we're I have not. Uh, you know where it is on South Campbell and James River, right there at across from Sam's. Mexican food is what it is, or Mexican, Mexican food. food. Mexican yeah. food. Okay. Yeah, and I have all my work in there. I did. I was commissioned to do five large scale paintings and murals in there, and okay. it's it's all generated from the day of the dead okay ah. and so not exactly like this but kind of similar in in the content and uh it's it really was a lot of fun to do because it's really bright colors and these are just you know freaky looking skeleton type yeah, of, I, I, yeah. of faces and and so i did a big mural as you walk into the restaurant and then i did uh four or five large scale paintings that are throughout the restaurant that are one of them's nine feet long the other one's like eight feet long and they're big paintings and it's Damn. really cool so how do you pick because it seems to me like you have a lot of cultural themes i like that yeah how do you yeah. how do you decide do you just roll a dice and go all right i'm gonna do some egyptian stuff today i'm gonna no do no samurai for, stuff today. not necessarily for for this one with the habaneros restaurant uh you know, I, I walked in as they were in the build out stage and I said, Hey, do you need some artwork? Here's what I've done in the past. And I showed him my work of all the Cuban cigar ladies. He goes, oh, this is perfect what I need, oh, wow. but I like the style, but what I want is different content. And I said, yeah, great. So we got talking about it and, uh, very quickly we, we got it done and, and it worked out really well. So that was a commission. How about nails? I'm gonna have yeah. To go. yeah. Yeah. The food is really good. And what it's a get? wide selection. I get a lot of seafood there. And the seafood really? is, is pretty good. And then some pork. Pork is really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, they prepare the shrimp, the shrimps, uh, was it camarons? Camarons. Camarons. Yeah, camarons. Camarons. yeah. yeah it's really Have good. Have you ever had mofongo? No. Oh, Rick, I'm about to ruin your life here. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I. So there's this little shop in East St. Louis Street. It's a Puerto Rican spot. Okay. In Maceton. Um, mofongo is... All right, that's my phone right there. There you go. Look at this right there. Okay. Uh, people, people probably don't know what this is either. So let me share this right here. Yeah, that's my phone man. Put some sauce. Normally, uh, you'll have soup like broth. So you drink. You you'll put that in the middle of like a cup of broth, so you can cut it, dip it, so it softens. Then you get the meat, and it is really good. Phenomenal. It looks uh, good it's it's phenomenal you i highly suggest that you try that if you like seafood and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh trying that but you ever been to puerto rico no i never have all right no i'm, a, I'm, a, I'm it, going in january nice. i'm gonna bring you some stuff oh i love it yeah i would love it I'm going in january it. so oh, it's cool. yeah parents everybody's gonna see my kid and meet my wife oh awesome well, that's yeah, good it's been a while <laughs> yeah well that's very good it's exciting that but that's cool that you to. get those inspirations from different yeah. cultures how do you yeah. how do you roll that um well, you know, I, I try to see what, you know, in what interests me, right, in, in different cultures and whether it's Spanish culture or French or whatever. And in doing that, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'll get online a lot of times and just start surfing and saying, oh, this is cool. This is really cool. And then I'll YouTube, start. YouTube, TikTok. Yeah, YouTube Facebook. and, you know, all of those, all those venues. And uh, then I'll start trying to. You know, if I don't understand terminology or understand this, I'll go, what's that all about? So then I'll delve a little deeper into it. And so it's just a progression is what it is. That's and then, pretty cool. And then when I find something that's really neat, I go, oh, well, this kind of spurs on the creative painting aspect of it. And so I'll start thinking, okay, let's pull some images together and see what I can come up with content wise and see what I can do. That's interesting because that's how I uh, try to pick my subjects to write jokes about. Oh, wow. Yeah, like I'll be thinking about something. 99% of the time, it's like something that happened to me and I'll try to like make it funny. 
But yeah. lately it's like uh, about different things happening or different yeah. things about that. So that's cool that there's like a, a similarity in yeah. how to choose, how to make a decision-making process oh, to good. make it into art. Dude, I got to tell you, this painting is, it's gorgeous. Well, thank you. I sure appreciate I it. I love the, I got to admit, man, I love the parrot. And the fact that the parrot has a drink on his hand. Yeah. He's like holding Jimmy's drink. That's what it looks like to me. Right, right. But the straw is that way. So I'm thinking, well, the parrot wouldn't be able to. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That And the fact that he has glasses is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was, like I said, this is a lot of fun to do. When I got started on it, I said, well, let's see how, how she goes. And, you know, sometimes I'll do a painting and and trash it and start again and trash it and start again because i just i'll paint over it because i just am not happy with it uh yeah. this one wasn't that way i was able to generate this uh without without any problem so yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool, cool though yeah I, I love how long have you been painting for rick I like oh god i you know i painted in high school then i got to college and uh decided to pursue i was going to be an architect and decided that i didn't want to do that and got into call industrial design mm. and i was at the university of kansas at the time and I, they had a good design school and so i started doing that but at that point in time i was so busy with college i didn't get a chance to paint because i didn't paint a lot in college i was yeah. doing all the studying other studying a lot studying a lot and doing a lot of the industrial design type of processes and learning all of that uh i was doing a lot of you know styling renderings and things like that so i was keeping my artistic uh talent going yeah, yeah. but as far as painting canvas paintings i wasn't doing that and when i got out of school then i started finding i had some time and i'm going i'm going to get back into this so it was just uh after i got out of school when was that back in 84 Four. 84 yeah so i've been painting ever since and and i've got a you know a whole whole house full of paintings my wife's saying what are we gonna do with all these paintings i said well <laughs> Kind of, Keep them there. Keep kind them of there. Uh, emotionally attached to some of these. I don't think we can get rid of them. And we joke around about it. <laughs> yeah, anyway. that's that's one thing I, I try not to do with like writing. Anything I write, like anything whatsoever, whether it's comedy or other stuff. It's like I try not to like attach to it to an yeah. extent, I guess. But it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, because you put like, your heart and soul into it. Yeah, it's like know? when a joke doesn't work, that's worked millions of times. And it's like, oh, well, we're going to have to yeah, shout that. And yeah. it's like, oh, fuck this. Like, All right. That's that's pretty cool though. Yeah. Dude, I, I love your art and for well, anybody who's interested, they can find it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so that's good. Going back to when you were working on on fitness equipment. Yeah. So what 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 did you like about that? Well, I was always into exercise when I was in school. I always uh, you know, was at the gym constantly and all that. So I understood the you know, the whole aspects of, of fitness and, and what it took to design machines to replicate the movement that is needed to develop muscles, right? So then let me rephrase my question. Okay. So you went from, this is what I'm trying to ask, actually. Oh. You went from art to, to that. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did that change? Like, how did that change occur? Like in your head, you were like, well, I'm going to oh. go sell oh. clean equipment. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, when I got out of college, mm -hmm. uh, trying to find a job. Okay. Obviously. And okay. so this job opportunity came up in Auburn, Alabama for a big fitness manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And so I sent them my portfolio that I'd established in college and they liked what I did. And so I went down there and I worked for, I guess about eight eight years 10 years maybe down there had the best time of my life i mean it was so Selling much fun and stuff. no it was designing equipment yeah oh, yeah i was in the engineering okay. department i was okay. designing and so I, I would conceptualize new pieces of exercise equipment and then we would put it over to the drafting board then we put in prototype stage and then we make it how do you and so that was you, did you work with other people like with other yeah i'd work with a marketing department Okay. The way the corporation worked with the marketing department, they'd say, okay, here's what we're looking for, for complete lines of products this year. And that's how eventually I got into my own business and we would develop product lines for retailers. And it was based off of what I had okay. done before. So they probably so, had done some research. On yeah, that. they like, had hey, researched. They we... said, for example, they say, okay, we want a weightlifting bench. This weightlifting bench has to have certain features because not all weightlifting benches are the same. Yeah. Certain features. And then it has to be at a certain price point. So that was a challenge because if you, if you have no constraints at all, I mean, I can design, you know, really cool stuff. Yeah. Like well, then that, all this glass one, have you ever seen that one? 
There's one yeah, that yeah. there's like a dude, I, I want one so bad. One of yeah. my friends has it and I went the other day. Yeah. And I was like, really... this this is garbage. And he's like, Oh no, you have to make a profile. And right. I went like and I was like, Oh, yeah, it's what really, the hell is really this? cool. But you know, it that type of stuff was all the products were developed based off of criteria that we had. And so when it got down to price points, it, it really kind of limited what you could do. So you that was when the design aspect was a real challenge for you, right? Because you're able to say, okay, this is what I can do with what the parameters that I have. I was going off, I apologize. Oh, that's right. So uh, that worked out really well. Uh, did that, like I said, for a number of years. And we do everything from weightlifting benches to, I think I mentioned this before, to treadmills, to home gyms, you know, these multi-station home gyms yeah. that you would have, that you would have everything from a bench press to lower cables to upper cables and everything like that. Uh, we did all that. Then then uh, about, that, about that time in the early 80s, the elliptical market came into play. Okay. You know, elliptical machines were real popular. So we started working around that and treadmills, obviously, and exercise bikes. And we came up with, I, I worked on a project, probably my my favorite, my best, most well-known project that I worked on back in 84 and 80, about 86, I guess, 87, something like that. Uh, we were going, the, um, the owner of the company came to us and he said, we need to compete against a product that's out on the market called the Schwinn Airdyne bike. Have you ever heard of that? No. Schwinn Airdyne was a, an exercise bike that was, had a fan in the front and the pedal worked off the resistance of the fan when you pedaled. And so the faster you pedaled, the more, okay, the more the, air uh, it captured. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. And it had yeah, the, yeah, yeah, it had yeah, the yeah. movable handlebars to it. Yeah. We, we have, I, I, those machines in the jujitsu world are, um, God, if it's the one that I think it's like a, it looks literally like someone put a fan. Correct. And then when you go, yeah, yes, we still use that at the gym. Yeah, that's yeah. like if you fuck up or so, something, you have to get on it. For so a here, here was here was a good good example of oh. of how you can take a product that is there that was, at that point in time was really kind of antiquated in the design. It was really old. Oh, okay. Looking. And so we came up with a newer version of it and got around all the design patents and all of the mechanical patents to it. And came up with a new version that was updated and it looked a lot better, looked more modern. And we sold it into Sears. Sears sold, God, I think 800,000 pieces in the first year, which is amazing. And then we started selling it to other retailers and we, we took that product. And what you do, what the company did is they, they, started, they started making variations of that product to hit different price points. So, okay. <laughs> excuse okay. me. So this one was at a, a mid range price point. They said, we need to go higher to compete with what Schwinn is doing at their price point. Okay. Now we won't sell as many, but we'll tackle that market and we'll go down in price point and hit it where Walmart would want to buy it at their own price oh, well, point for a, for a $99 works. price point, oh, for example. Okay. So we had these, these, we call them air resistance bikes. We had those all across the market and it's like, wow. Air they, resistance bikes. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, see. these fucking things. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, you invented these? Well, <laughs> well, no, I, I came up. Careful with, how you answer, Rick. <laughs> right, right. No, I came up with variations of them that, oh, like God. this one. Let's see the stamina product there. I had some work on that, right there. The uh, let me but share go, this. Let me share this right here. Right there. Okay. If you go down to the one that I designed was called the ergometer. 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 Call it. Put the ergometer in there. Yeah. Well, it was air A I R. Oh, A I R. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the ESL right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the ergometer. Okay, scroll down, see if you can find an old ergometer. There it is, right there. The DP ergometer, stationary exercise bike, and it came in various. There's one right to the left of it that was a white version. Then there was that one had a gray version to it. Yeah, those things and, are. And these things were were just they were hot. I mean, everybody wanted one. I remember and, we had some of some of some stuff like this in the army. Like oh, yeah. They, oh yeah, they used it. It was just yeah. It was not um it was not something you wanted to be on because it really sucked to do. Like it it really like yeah, yeah right. you're getting wind, 
Yeah, you're getting that little wind. But it's but by God, you better you move were every inch of your body to be able to yeah. like that's why I say like we have that at the gym and it's not a yeah. I, I look at that thing like most people will look at their ex wife, like this made discontent. And a, and a little bit, a little bit of wickedness, because I know I'm going to feel good after I do it, but then I'm going to feel bad again when I'm doing it. There you go. Like, that's why. Right. Yeah, those. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yeah. That so that was those. that was it. And we did a number of, of of bikes with that. So, like I said, that was just one of of many designs that we did of, of bikes and treadmills and, and just a lot of different things. So that's how I got into it. Then we then we branched off from that. I got together with two business partners. We branched off from that and started our own business. And then we were able to take uh, these product lines mm -hmm. and develop them for companies. So that's wild to me. Yeah, how so we that did that. And works. and that's that's when I was over in China all the time because we manufactured them over in China. So I was over. How there. was that? I bet it was, was beautiful. Good. Yeah, it was really nice. It was nice over there. It Not got, that I would say anything got, bad about China. No, it got, <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. You got to be careful on that. But it, you know, it got to the point when I was over there for an extended period of time that I just wanted to get home. You know, yeah. I was tired of Chinese food after it's a like while. 19, 19 hours, right? Yeah, it took fourteen to go from. From um, uh, from Chicago nonstop to Hong Kong. Oh, nonstop. Four, yeah, nonstop fourteen. Oh, <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah. that's long. The meals are good though. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, I've been, well, yeah. What airline was it that you traveled? United with? mostly. Yeah, United. I, I went United when I went to Korea and when I came back, and my God, dude, they they upgraded me because I was military. But, yeah, but even like I looked at the like the regular class, right? The regular tickets. You had good leg space, man. And yeah, you, and that's always the key. Yeah. You know, I always like to travel business class because all you know, the perks and everything. But if I had to travel um, coach, you know, I would always say, God, I, I want an exit row at least because I've, I've mm, got to have that. And you, yeah. you can't put me in the middle of a of the aisle or the middle of the seat row with, yeah. you know, crying babies all around and, and I can't get out to. Yeah, the crying uh, babies don't bother me as much because yeah. um, I'll just put like I, I have custom made um earbuds right so right. pop that in i'm yeah. good uh my thing is just the people that are like talking like loudly like oh, that's yeah. my you whole get thing that. yeah you like get i that. have I at least have decency to talk to you like this you know we right i can interact well whatnot, sure right sure but Some like on a 14 don't. hour flight man like you know it's 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 like being in a basic training barracks you know yeah it is it and crazy. you know we've all you know i don't know how you do on sleeping on those long flights but i struggle with it i i, I don't it. yeah i I, I literally have um uh it's called frequency sleeping yeah i've heard uh, yeah va va I, I learned this at va during therapy yeah. uh and i put that on for me it's a 470 something frequency and literally i hear that in 10 minutes later i'm out oh that's good yeah my wife that's has like a yeah everybody has like a different it's like sound <laughs> science yeah. or whatever the fuck it is i yeah. gotta i'm trying to get someone on the podcast about it because it that's really it, it works in therapy yeah it works that's in therapy cool. that's really cool but that's cool that you were so yeah going back and forth yeah so it. i was going back and forth and then it worked out good then we ended up having a customer over in spain so i got to spend some time in spain Ooh, that was a where, lot of you know, uh, up in northern spain near bilbao in the basque region okay so you had good <laughs> good seafood you had paella oh yeah you had a lot of paella, oh didn't i you? loved it and yeah. we were in the rioja region of wine so so that was always good too. How much did you drink? <laughs> a lot. And and that was always a problem because you know, you you the the Spanish and I think Europeans in general, as as you are probably very aware of, they they'll eat dinners late. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be getting back to the hotel about, you know, midnight or one and we'll have had a lot to drink. Then at six o'clock in the morning, yep. we're up and going. It's like, oh, I need some rest. And, yeah, and with the jet lag, it. It, yeah, you did. And with the jet lag, that's always an issue too. So yeah, that was so one was thing. Like, that was one thing I realized. Um, I realized when I came back from from like uh, Korea, it was like you can walk everywhere. Mm -hmm. like you literally don't. You take the train everywhere, and like the way that they eat is extremely different from the way that like I eat here, right? Like I eat very specifically here, but due to New York, like they walk everywhere, right? Like it's it's ridiculous like yeah. i have a friend he does jujitsu and he walks like eight miles yeah and then he'll of... take he'll take the train and it's like i'm like why dude he's like ah, i just don't want to get a car yeah like they yeah. just don't want to drive right. 
Right. I just don't want to drive. So yeah, the food is, yeah. what was your favorite thing? Was it paella your favorite thing? It or probably favorite? was. Yeah, favorite, it probably was. It was just awesome. I just love seafood. And uh, the thing that we really like, we were staying in the town of San Sebastian, which is north of Bilbao <coughs> or north, northwest. I'll I pull that up because I'm not. It's uh, right it's... on the coast. All right. It's, it's near the French border. Okay. Oh, and so San you're like right Sebastian. over here. Yeah, right yes, there. Yes, I say about the end. There it is. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait. And yeah. And, oh, dude. And so we were we were so close to Bordeaux, France, and I never to get a chance to go over there because were I was, you married during that time too? Uh, I was, and my wife had just right, had good. two. I'm not going to ask two, the question. I want to. Yeah, our two <laughs> kids, and so we she couldn't travel because she was taking care of the kids, and yeah, and so that was that was difficult. But but uh, yeah, talk about uh, it was just awesome. But what we would do is we would go go to the uh, when we'd get out of the factory uh, each day, we'd go to the the tapas bars and just make oh, a, okay. and in old town, San Sebastian was just awesome. You just go from restaurant to restaurant to restaurant. And it was so much fun. Spain is i uh, I'd like to go to Portugal. Like to Port visit. I would too. I recently did a commission for a gentleman over did in Portugal. You? Yeah. I've heard. And uh, he had so much, so many awesome things to say about it. I've been, I've been reading up on like the research that they've done the past, like, think over 10 years about drugs because i think they're like a bunch of stuff is legalized oh i know like a bunch of stuff and like their crime rate has gone down but i'm trying to like learn yeah. more about that someone brought it up to me the other day and i was like i'm sure there's a podcast like rogan probably has someone for that already yeah, yeah. trying to just listen to that so yeah but spain i've been to madrid i had a layover many 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 years ago for like two days okay oh, cool. and uh i i don't care if i lose sleep so back in those days, I didn't care if I lost sleep. Yeah. And I just went back and I looked at my time, you know, military is like, all right, we got 47 hours. What can we do in 47 hours, boys? Yeah. You can do a lot in 47 hours. And I was like, let's go. Let's do it. So we, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. how most of those places And Madrid was just, I, I, the only way that I could describe that was it's like a movie. Yeah. Like, like when yeah, you we go were, to Spain, it's... I, yeah, I spent the night there on the, I flew out of there the following day mm -hmm. and uh, we had a great time. It was just awesome in Madrid. I wish I would have been able to spend more time there. Yeah, but... my, my co-host, he's, he's out uh, right now. He's still doing comedy up in Denver. He, oh, yeah. he used to visit Spain a shit ton. Like oh a, yeah. Like a shit ton. Yeah. He spent, I think he spent like over, over, well over 10 years in, in the ocean in the navy and he yeah. did like maybe three three to five uh on uh like on port wow so he's like seeing like he has like dude he has pipes that he got in france he's got pipes that he got in greek like he I showed him to christian so cool. and christian's, oh, like, I bet christian's shit. like yeah, yeah. He, and you know christian's hard to like oh yeah like, oh shit he's like yeah, yeah this is and i was like Oh, that is snap. Cool. yeah do you, do you ever think you'll do pipes or do you like design no i i have um you know, back when I got into cigar smoking, I, I did that for a while and I, I was intrigued by pipes. And so yeah. I started buying some and I bought some, I bought a Mearsham, I bought, you know, some Peterson's, I bought, you know, some of the others. And I have a collection of probably about half a dozen, about six of them. And I really don't smoke them much anymore. Um, the problem I've always had with pipes is they're an effort to keep lit. And, and I'd yeah. much rather sit down and if, if I'm doing something, I'd much rather just have a cigar. Yeah, it's not really my thing. Yeah. It's it's yeah. just not it's not really my my thing. Yeah. But Rick, it's <laughs> it's been awesome to have you, brother. Well, thank you. I sure appreciate the opportunity. Where can, I always enjoy it. Where can everybody find your work? Obviously, uh our our bird. Our bird studio works dot com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um uh, you can check that out. And uh, that's usually where I get most of my traffic from. And uh, it works out really well. Dude, and if I, any yeah. local people just go over to just for him and and I have a you know a lot of my artwork over there obviously so it would be good. Yeah, just for him has a lot a lot of your work. Like it's it's when you walk in it just it's like oh shit like that's <laughs> cool. And I I'm sure like a lot of people go in there and they see it and they go okay I want that fucking painting. Like, yeah. Yeah, I had a guy buy the Arnold Schwarzenegger painting that I did that's 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 the card that I I gave you that uh he was he was really excited. Yeah, I'm about. never using that. That's going yeah. on my on my safe box. Yeah, that's well, thank you, going. thank you. All right, bro. All right, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for doing this. I enjoy.